It was a night out that just went completely pear-shaped, but it was fabulous at the same time. <laughs> He went, I've got a current England international wearing a fucking emu costume, <laughs> and I've got one of the best videos in the country wearing a fucking tutu. <laughs> I went, I'm not on the bench. He went, I think you are, like. I went, I'm fucking not. And he went, it's Terry. And I went, Terry you? And he went, Terry Venables. And I went, fuck off. And I put, <laughs> and I put the phone down. I weed in it, and Stoney shit in it. <laughs> But Eileen Drury basically picked the squad. <laughs> you could see a car pulled into the nearby with some blue lights flashing with a police car behind. And it would be the physio being pulled out of the car <laughs> with his hands on the bonnet. I had three years left in my contract, which was worth a good couple of million. And I just went, you know what? Stick your money up your ass. I marked out the door and I didn't really play again after that, to be fair. Steve, our part two, gents. All right, Chris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We'll say, right. say hello before hello. we get into it. Hello. Hello. Rude. I would say. Hello to rude. everybody out there as well, listening and watching. Hope you're all well. You look good again. Oh, I always do. You're on a diet, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> day <laughs> one. Again. Yeah. No, day seven, I'll have Is you it? Know. Yeah, all last week I did it. No, you can't. I'm tell. on the mat. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, I want you I'm to on watch. the march. Um, I was on, I was 86, no, 80.3, and now I'm 79.2. So. This is going to be a test, isn't it? Because we're away for four lost, days. Basically, you've lost a big shit then, haven't you? <laughs> you dieted for a week and lost a big turd. But, yeah, this is, the, the, no, this will be the test because we're, we're out and about for a week, haven't we? Down we, south. Are, we are fucking grafting our knackers off. Leeds versus Crystal Palace tonight. In London, though, it, it's, it's Palace Leeds, but all of a sudden it's come a massive game, hasn't it? Yeah. When I'm we away. decided we were going, I thought it was just going to be another dead rubber, but what about Newcastle? On the march. On the match? Jesus Christ, there are another 10 games left. There's a, they have a chance of getting in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing. He's done, done well, hasn't he? He's done well because, I mean, they've, they've spent a bit of money, but not many of them have played. No, Trippy hasn't, has Trippy he? Trippy hasn't. I mean, the other lads haven't. The Burn and uh, yeah, the lad in midfield, whatever they call He's him. just started playing him, though. Oh, has he? Yeah. He, he didn't play for ages. Yeah. What about these new bits of kit? Yeah, yeah nice. He's not a sponsor, yeah. but... I'm going to go for this route. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fucking hell. The John Matson. Freddie <laughs> <laughs> <Benny> Mercury. <laughs> yeah, we've got some new mics, haven't we? Impressive, new aren't they? Stands. Yeah. Yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, hey, oh. yeah. What about uh, Rich Allison? No, it's it. Richard Allison. Richard Is Alson. that how you say oh, it? Yeah, Richard Allison. Richard Allison. Uh, did did Carragher get some stick for, for giving him some... Some well, uh, to be fair, I think Carragher went a bit fan mode, didn't he? Yeah. Like, a bit he too... I'll yeah. tell you what, though, he went... Get up! up. <laughs> he went, he went Get wrong, up. though. Like, <laughs> <up>. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, yeah. calm down. He went wrong, though, were he? No, I mean, he went... I think everybody were agreeing with him at home. Well, the, the one that got me was when he headed a corner away and run 15 yards and then went down. <laughs> so, so he'd been fucking Billy Whitehurst. <laughs> the one when he did have a go at him was a bit harsh because he nearly he snapped his ankle. Yeah. Well, he, he like... Thing he'd he with his, his ankle, then he went, Oh, I might have been a bit harsh on there, with Charlton there. <laughs> the he's one gone over his, his ankle. I think one of the one where he's headed a football and then 15 yards later gone down, like he'd been shot. <laughs> he's guaranteed in 90 minutes he's, you're going to see him with his hands over his face laid horizontal. At least three times. Yeah. Have you said that? Uh, maybe. But no, I think he deserved it. Yeah. Mate, what about him? He's the best player in the world, him. Who? Divokarigi. <laughs> he's fucking sensational, isn't it? Is, he, is his contract up? Oh, aye. Yeah. Is it? Do you think yeah. he wants to stay? Do you think he's comfy? He's, he's 27. Is he? Mm. To be he's fair, though, right? Do you know what, he's a legend, though, though, still is. He's, he's fucking he's right. He's right, right, goals. Do you know, as far as, like, obviously a lot of these modern players get a stick on that, right? He must be an incredible lad, money. Do you know, like, because he don't play, very rarely comes on unless they're really struggling. But whenever he does come on, he seems to, like... Try his nuts off, doesn't it? Yeah. I think they actually think, said yesterday, didn't they? That's that? Klopp, like getting into buy into the, Must the club be. and the team. Do you not know, remember? Remember Lonners saying that he was the, like he was incredible in training. Yeah. He was the best. Was he the best finisher. Yeah. Awesome. Best finisher, number one. But like the attitude that he's because he hadn't played for what three years. Regular. Yeah. yeah. He does his job when he comes on, though, doesn't exactly, he? Exactly. But that, what a good, what a great lad he he's, must be. He's proper super sub though, because he doesn't really do it when he plays, does he? Well, I don't yeah, know. They, said, they said if it wasn't Everton yesterday, he wouldn't have put him on. Probably wouldn't have even been on the bench. Man for the big occasion. 
Well, just always because it was Everton. Everton. Six in ten or something. Yeah, I'm like that though. Like big occasion, like a wedding or something. You like turn that. up. Turn up. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just, just go, for, go, go for a pint. Like I'll just have a pint in corner, but wedding. Sl- knee slide. Yeah. He's arrived. Sweat. Yeah. Tie round the head. But it fans. Has, uh, has got, fans of it. <laughs> it has got very interesting down here at the bottom, hasn't it? Since Burnley's, Burnley's picked up seven points, and this is a pot of dice. Yeah. Leeds are in trouble, Matty. We'll find out tonight, won't we, if they're in trouble? It's turned into a massive game for Leeds mm-hmm. tonight. Oh, live shows, gentlemen. We've got some dates. Have we? We have. We have. I've not got them on me. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be on Twitter tomorrow. Back end of the year, isn't it, though? Yeah. So, August, maybe a bit of a... Late August, early September. The, Man- the Manchester rescheduled date from oh. the Christmas party. Fourth, I think. Is that the fourth? Oh, Can we make that an early Halloween party? We could do, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. it's still Christmas. Like, we're we'll getting jumping. Fucking dressed up. Let's just go as we are. Oh, we're gonna have a bit of big occasion again, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, yeah but we'll the we're, a few live shows coming up in August, September. So the dates will be out and be on Twitter in the next couple of days, and and Instagram and Facebook and all that jazz. So you just you just sack me off on the the relegation dog fight, yeah. Shall we move on or? <laughs> I'm halfway through. Oh, halfway. I've never seen you so passionate about a football conversation. Halfway through. Uh, Matt has asked me to really bring it up. Uh, so who's going down? Uh, do you know what? I think Everton, I've seen their fixtures. They're fucking in, like, fucked. <laughs> fucked. They're fucking fucked. Everton are fucked. That's why you don't get a job on BBC, John. Probably, but <laughs> uh, I really, I think they're good. I think they're good. Opinion, opinion on the relegation dog fight? We've got John Parkin. <laughs> Fucking Everton. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the offensive language there. Yeah, I think, I Everton think they really are fucked. struggling, to be honest. Yeah, I do. I think Leeds, I think I Leeds think will get a point that. tonight. I think they'll win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they will but get a point. They'll win, but they'll get a little with it. <laughs> Surely Palace can't. They'd say Palace had an unbelievable Palace season. If Leeds win tonight... They go a point behind them. And they're saying Leeds are banging trouble. There you go. It's tough at the top, isn't it? Yeah. How we was good, wasn't he? Yeah. How yes. We, oh, how we won? I think that two's better. Yeah? The England stories are incredible and probably one of, if not the favourite story, I'm going to say. I can't even remember it. What is it? <laughs> uh, Roddle. That, that's all I'm going to say. Oh, You'll yeah, know when yeah, it happens. Yeah. Oh, I've, got, I've got it now. I've got it now. That's all I'm going to say. Give us a lyric. <laughs> God Give us a song. knows. God knows I want to break free. Do you want yeah. these? Well done. Good on there. Good. Right, shall we get him in then? Yeah. Have we got any, any more business? Oh, I, I, Anyone? I, yeah, I, on that very point, I've seen some new messages on Twitter saying, lads, it's a waste of time saying get him in then. I know. <laughs> you see it? Lads, you fuck, it's a waste of time. <laughs> we know he's not there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't ruin the illusion, John. But as if, but as if somebody's thought, Pissing me off. That. <laughs> I know. Like they said, should we get him in? And and it's it's winding him up. <laughs> so come on, Steve. Get, get <laughs> your send him big and So this oh, is, this so hold cut. on, there's someone at the door. <laughs> <laughs> just a minute. It's just the fact that this is gonna cut, the trailer will come on and then we'll be in a completely different <laughs> room. And people are getting pissed off about it. <laughs> come on, Steve! Fuck it, now we wanna get going! He's gonna be pissed off when he finds out we're in St. Alban. <laughs> oh, was uh, Joe Royal? Joe Royal, uh, brilliant. Um, I went down there. Um, as I said, I, I'd, I'd getting the the initial thing off Sir Bobby um, just before training, and I, I says, "Oh, I'll go today." Um, you know, what's the point of hanging on when your manager's but more or less sort of saying, eh. "You can leave." So I just thought, "All right, and fine. I'm not, I'm not here where I'm not wanted." So, I, so I went down. I met uh, Dennis Stewart, who, funny enough, I spoke to the other day. And uh, met up with him, met up with Joe, and Joe was like, listen, because Man City had gone from the depths of despair, let's be honest, and he sort of said, you know, we're going to do some good things. I think there was, I signed uh, Alfie Inga Haaland, um, Lauren Sharvey and George Weir. Remember George Weir? The, mm-hmm. we, we, the four of us signed. Anyway, we started the season pretty promisingly, and, and that went just downhill. Do you know, like, teams that's come up, start really well, and then just, Bomb, yeah. and that's what we did. We bombed completely and got uh, got relegated. But I loved Joe. I thought he was a lovely man, lovely person. Still see him when I go to Everton games. 
Uh, but I, I can remember I was in San Francisco and I got a phone call. Uh, Joe's gone. And I was like, who's the new manager? Kevin Keegan. I was like, oh, right, okay, let's do this one again. <laughs> you must be thinking, fucking hell, if Carl's big managers. Well, the, do you know what the funny thing was, you know, Kevin did exactly the same as what he did at Newcastle because we were not great. And then all of a sudden we had this team and I kid you not, it was a fantastic team. Um, there was me, there was Richard Dunn and Sylvan Distan in the back. We had Ile Berkovic, who was a very, very good player. We had this player who played for Monaco called Ali Benabia. Oh my good God, absolute magician with the ball. So we had Ali Benabia with Darren Huckabee, who was at Newcastle with me, who, when I spoke previously about them five sides, just didn't really handle it but his pace was devastating. We had Sean Wright Phillips the other side. We had Nic Nicholas Anelka, uh, Paolo Wanchop up front, but we also had Paul Dickoff, Sean Gota, um, Kevin Horlock, uh, Gerard Vikens, Danny Tiato, all these players. Um, the players you played Jansen. with out, throughout your career is incredible. Like, when you, uh, when you start listening to players. all through Newcastle and Man City. Yeah, I mean, you're not even, we haven't even touched on the England part yet, yeah. but um, it was just, an absolute pleasure. And I was lucky as well because it was at the proper main road. You know, yeah. the Eddie Yard's nice, but it's not main road. Yeah. Were you playing that game when um, Keane did Highland? Or the reverse fixture? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we knew it was coming. Um, bear in mind the history of that was um, Alfie was playing for Leeds and, and obviously Roy was at uh, Man U. And if you look at the footage, I think... Uh, Alfie's just trying to shepherd the ball out for, for it to go out for a goal kick and, and Keane lashes out and obviously does his knee Alfie doesn't know, I've, I've spoke to Alfie about this he didn't know and obviously Keane's on the floor, he's done his knees in absolute agony and, and uh, Alfie's bent over and said something to them um, was it Roy's fault? Possibly, yes but I think he was aggrieved at the fact that Alfie had said something but Alfie didn't know he was in yeah. that much distress did he, ever say what, did he ever tell you what he said? Uh, well, it probably would have called him a C-U-N-T, in all fairness, yeah. but um, I just think it was just like, you know, the, the, the Man U Liverpool um, Leeds games, uh, at the, like, you know, the atmosphere and the, the rivalry amongst them. So Alfie's obviously said that Roy's never forgetting it. Uh, and, of course, we were in the dressing room, and I think it's, uh, it's a game where they can actually relegate us as well uh, mm -hmm. because we're struggling. And... Um, in the, in the tunnel, he was going, I'm going to do you, you're getting it, you're getting it. So we all knew he was going to get it. Like, it was only I was a just about to ask, was there any inkling that he might be, <laughs> well, you know, well, he might be just... after revenge, but... But it was, it was like, uh, we, like I said, we, we just knew it was it was coming. And as I said, even if he hadn't said anything in the tunnel, then then we knew it was still going to come. It yeah. was inevitable. Um, and of course, the ball comes to, to Alfie and, 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 he, and he doesn't. Um, I think Roy's walking away before he's even shown the cart. I think there's myself and Paul Dickoff say something to, to Roy uh, as he walked past. He, he blanks us and just walks away. But, I mean, it's not a great challenge, but as I said, we knew it was coming. And, and I've spoke to Alfie before it happened and afterwards it happened, and, and he sort of said, look, he tried to do me initially when he actually hurt his knee. Mm. He says, I couldn't understand why he was, like, so grave. But, I mean, listen, you you, you watch him now, and, he, you know, when, when he's on the TV, Roy Keane, and he's absolutely brilliant. He, he says it how it, uh, how it is. Obviously agreed with Alfie and, and wanted to take um, vengeance upon him. That's it's quite it's just scary just... watching that the clip of it because he is just walking off, takes his armband out, not a care yeah. in the world. No, he's just well, he hurt him, didn't he? Did he? What yeah. did he do? Is it his cruise ship? Did Harlan do he his done his knee? He had to retire because of that as well. So he um, killed, so that was him. killed his yeah. yeah. So I killed think um, you know um, Alfie was out for ages, and I, I think he tried absolutely all kinds to come back, but he just couldn't come back. So. Um, you know, it was just one of them ones he had to retire. But uh, having said that, he's got a he's got a son that plays now. That's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, half decent, and he's like, if it, he's got half a chance. <laughs> yeah, he's got half a chance to be fair. But I mean, Alfie was a, was a good lad. The lads liked him, and it was just a sad way to end your career when you know it's kind of premeditated. Whether they've spoken um, since, I don't I don't know. But um, do you think you'd, if, be, you'd hold it against him though, wouldn't you? Do you know, oh, in terms say, of well, games, I mean, you I think said, it wouldn't have been a big, a bigger game for you. As you could have got relegated. The manager might have just thought, "I tell you what, I'll just drag him out. I'll, I'll not play him." I don't know. I mean, as I said, I mean, we got absolutely pumped that day, but we drew one-one, 
um, I actually scored, which is like, a, I, I wasn't that bad at Man City goals wise either as well. But uh, look, you, you'd have thought in some respects that maybe Sir Alex might have just thought, listen, I'm just going to pull you out, Roy. You know, because everybody knew what was going to happen, the build up before the game and stuff like that. But um, I mean, I've never met Roy King. I used to live next to him when I lived in Manchester. And um, I can remember Richard Dunn saying if he's obviously done a uh, new one from the Republic of Ireland and stuff like that. And this is the um, this is why I'm thinking it's bizarre. He's never met me. Um, I can remember blockbusters where he used to get videos and stuff like that. Uh, I used to live in a place called Hale in Borden in um, in Manchester, and Keane and uh, Brian Robson and all them and a lot of other players used to live around that area, and I was just taking some videos back. Uh, to blockbusters, and Roy Kane must have seen me taking them back. And anyway, he said to Dunny on the on the coach, he's gone. Uh, what's uh, how we like? And Dunny's gone. Oh, he's a good lad. You know, he's decent. He, you know, he's good in the dressing room, and I like him and all that. And he went. I seen him going to blockbusters. Looks a bit of a cunt to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I went. Really? He's got to use the C word. <laughs> He doesn't even know who I am. <laughs> take you some videos back. As if there's like a, a cuntish way to take your videos <laughs> I'm just, back. I'm just walking about with a couple of deep, um, oh, videos and I thought, I'll be slipping out for you to me. <laughs> Get kept spiring a tree outside his house. Ready to pounce on him. <laughs> <laughs> Get his own back. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the dressing room and everything at City, I mean, uh, like you said, Dunny and the, the, the lads. Yeah, we had were really good lads. Fitting. You know, I, I mean, I've mentioned the players... Uh, um, you know, we had a, another another lad who was absolutely brilliant. God bless his soul. We had Mark Vivian Four, um, and I was number twenty four. Mark was uh, twenty three, and Dunny was twenty two. So you sat next to each other where your squad number was. And obviously, me, me and Dunny used to go out quite a lot at the time, the right time, at Man City. Um, and Dunny used to live on his own, and sometimes I used to go to where uh, to Dunny's gaff and have a couple of beers with him. And Sylvan Distan used to live on the flat underneath him. And Sylvan was really kind of straight, you know, great athlete, looked after his body and stuff like that. Me and Dunny just trained and played as, you know, we we would. And um Sylvan complained. He used to he come he, he came to us in the dressing room. Any more noise, I am gonna see the I'm gonna see the manager. This is too loud, this is too loud. He complained. He, he compl he, uh, <laughs> but well, he complained he, to the manager about the, the flat above. No, he, he was going to do that, but he complained to me and Dunny. Me and Dunny was sitting there and Marco was in between us and he went, Any more like this noise? And even Marco went, Turn the fuck off. <laughs> and he was the nicest man you could ever meet. So me and Dunny went, all right, and fine. So me and Dunny went out and we brought the shed load of people back to Dunny's gaff and we blasted the music and we were all going, the roof, the roof, <laughs> the roof was on fire. <laughs> Sylvan was not happy that I see him. <laughs> I have got no comment. I have got, I am not saying the manager, but this is not acceptable. I am, I am moving, I am moving. <laughs> so you're going out of the club? <laughs> no, he, was, he moved house. How did you end up leaving City? I had a fallout with Kevin uh, because he'd asked me to go on the bench. Uh, I, I thought I was playing really well. And um, he asked me to go on the bench. And we had, Terry Mack was there. Derek Vazakali was there. Arthur Cox, old school Arthur Cox. And um, and I, I kind of, for some reason, I just felt as though Kevin was being a bit weird. Obviously, I know him really well. And, uh, and do you know when you get like the kind of the curly finger and the custard pies coming? Mm. We you were sat there coming. before we were leaving. We were, uh, the bus was outside and we were going to Aston Villa again. And uh, and Kevin was basically pulling in players like, listen, you're going to play, I'm going to play here, you're going to be here. And then I just thought, he's done a couple of players, which is kind of, I think he pulled Gerard Vikings and said something to Gerard. And I knew Gerard would play in that centre of, um, of Sylvan Distan and Dunny on the other side. <clears throat> and he pulled Gerard and I thought, Again, I'm getting dropped here. And I've never, ever been dropped. Not once I'd have been dropped. I've been on the bench, but that's me, me, me once coming back from an injury. Otherwise, I've played. And uh, I thought I was actually playing really well. And he brought me in. He went, I'm just going to put you on the bench today. And, I, and straight away before he even finished, when you can fuck off. And he went, well, what do you mean? I went, I'm not on the bench. He went, I think you are, like. And I went, I'm fucking not. And he you went, bite yourself, then. I'm telling you, you're going on the bench. And I went, I'm not. I went, how am I on the bench? He went, I'm just giving you a rest. He said, look, you've been playing really well, uh, but I've just, I'm just i going to try uh, Gerard. I went, no. 
I went, I'm not, I'm not having it. And he went, what do you mean you're not having it? I went, you can get fucked. <laughs> I was really annoyed. And I went, you can get fucked. And he went, excuse me. And I went, you can get fucked. And all the cops went, steady, steady. And I went, you can fuck off and all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And, um, and it, Arthur was like, I think you need to calm down, son. I think you need to calm down. I went, I'm calming down. I said, I'm furious. I said, I'm playing really well. You want to drop me? I went, I'm not having it. And he went, you're on the bench. As simple as that. I went, stick your bench up your ass. And I stormed out. Anyway, Arthur Cox and Derek Fazatli came after me and he went, Gaffer's furious. And I went, oh, is he now? I went, so am I. <laughs> I said, I'm not getting on the bench. And he went, just go on the bench. I went, no, I'm not. I said, I'm playing really well. I am not going on the bench. I said, I should be playing. And I said, ask any of them lads. Do they want me to play? I said, every one of them say, yeah. And he went, but the Gaffer's made his mind up. And I went, well, so have I. And he went, you're not going on the bench? I went, no. Anyway, Kevin called me back. He went, have you calmed down? I went, no. He went, are you going to the bench? I went, no. <laughs> and he went, well, it's best you go home then. I went, all right then, I'll go home. So I went home. They got beat. And um, <laughs> not the best decision I've ever made, if I'm being brutally honest. <laughs> <laughs> and they got beat. Jara Vikings got injured within about five minutes as well. And so they didn't have anybody to come in that position. So it all went Pete Tong for me. So uh, all the lads had the day off the next day. So I went in the next day and uh, I had Arthur Cox went, he wants to see you, son. He wants to see you. <laughs> and I thought, oh, shit. And then, I mean, obviously all through the like, like, last couple of di- the previous couple of days, I was like, oh, you idiot. Uh, and I went up and he went, uh, you're out. And I went, what do you mean I'm out? And he went, you're out. And I went, what do you mean? And I, I like a dick, I went, what do you mean I'm out? <laughs> <laughs> And he went, and he left phone, he went, you're out. <laughs> and I went, what, you, you're selling me? I said, I've got three years left in my contract. And he went, you're out. He went, Mickey Adams has been on the phone. You're going to Leicester. I went, oh, am I? He went, yeah, he says, we've agreed. I went, I ain't. And he went, I think you best go and speak to him. I went, no. Nah. I said, I've got three years left in my contract. I said, so, you know, um, I think I can get back in the team. And he went, I promise you, as long as I'm manager, you're never getting back into this team. I went, all right, then I'm, we'll see. So It's like a little, like a little school kid type yeah, thing, oh, isn't it? You're, it's you're a dick. No, you're a dick. <laughs> My dad's out of the yours. But you're out. What do you mean I'm out? Just leaning across like that. And honestly, we were this far away. I went, what do you mean I'm out? He's going, you're out. <laughs> it, was just, it was so embarrassingly bad. When I mean, look back, I've actually spoke to Kevin about this before, and uh, he, he was just giggling. He was like, how embarrassing were we? And I went, I know. <laughs> and I was going to go, I know. <laughs> but I didn't. You were embarrassing. No, you were embarrassing. <laughs> so I went home. And I uh, went to see Kevin again, and we just sat down, and we had a chat, and I basically sort of said, what's the score? He went, I can't, I can't have you doing that. He says, it's just impossible for me. He says, as a manager, um, for you to show the way that you did, and I totally got it because I was out of order. I totally regret it. Uh, but I just felt as though, I, because I was passionate and I wanted to play. And, um, and it didn't help. The result went the wrong way as well. And then coming off the uh, bench. Yeah. And Gerard getting injured, and I was like, oh, if anything, if it, like a storm Worst in a port, it was scenario. just like everything went wrong. Um, did you apologise? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. And he, but his mind was made up. Yeah. I mean, Kevin was like that. He was just like, no, that's it. And I said, listen, I'll do it. I'll, I'll go on the reserves. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll, you know, I'll get on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds, like, now, it sounds like when I tell our Oscar to come off computer and he's like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not, you are. You're not. And then 10 minutes later, he's like, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. Please, please. Like, I'll, I'll go on the bench. He went, you're not going on the bench. I will go on the bench. He went, you're not going on the bench. Please, I'll go on the bench. I'll, I'll <laughs> so go did, on the bench. Do you not want to leave City then? No, because it was a fantastic club. Met some amazing people there. Some people that are still there. Um, but that was... I've had two two big regrets in football. I mean, obviously injuries is one of them, and I had three really bad injuries that kept me off for a year each. But one was turning Liverpool down, and the other one was having an argument with Kevin. Um, but I felt at that particular time, and I and, and I kind of still feel he should have still played me because I was the best player at that particular time to play in that position. But what am I going to do? I don't want to play reserve team football for three years. I want to play first team football, so I went to Leicester. And that ended up being the worst decision I ever mm. made. Six months you were there? Yeah. Why do you not think it worked? Did not get on the manager at all. 
at all. Um, and as it turned out, he was one of these managers that wanted to just run the arse off you all the time. Well, I couldn't do that. I had a thing called compartment syndrome. I can't, I cannot run continuously. I can play games because it's games as classed as a fat leg. So I can stop, start, stop, start. I can't run until I'm sick. And then because my calves will tear. So I ran, tore army calves. So I couldn't play the first game of the season. I couldn't play the next game. So I was out for about three weeks for the first, first part of the season. Missed all this, missed all the other games. And uh, I just went, you know, I, I kind of do this, to be quite honest. I eventually got fit after weeks and weeks because I'd tore my calves. Anyway, we played in the Christmas time. And we played Everton away. And um, we were winning 2-0. We were comfy. I think we were coming to like the 85th minute. And I'd shout across to the bench, me hammy's going to go, get me off. If you get me off before it even gives that tug, I said, I'll be absolutely fine. And uh, he refused. So, of course, there was a long ball over the top. I've gone sprinting for it. Bang, it's gone. So I'm out. Next day, because I had treatment. And I was sat, I literally put my backside on the, um, on the bench. And Dave was just about to do some stuff, like ultrasound and stuff. And uh, Alan, remember Alan Cork, the centre forward? Yeah. Alan Cork went, Gaffer wants to see you. So I walked in, he went, you're out. And I went... What do you mean I'm out? I said I'm injured. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I said I'm injured. What on earth do you want me to do? And he just was like, out, just go out. And and fobbed me off. And I went, I'm not leaving, like. I said, I won't pay it up. And he went, you'll not see another penny. And I went, all right, then fine. I said, fine, not a problem. Um, I had three years left in my contract, which was worth a good couple of million. And I just went, you know what? Stick your money up your ass. And walked out the door and I, I didn't really play again after that, to be fair. Oh, Stevie, I went over America. Stevie, Stevie. Don't leave the door behind. Yeah, I did. Just had enough. Don't leave it behind. I can't believe you've, you've just walked away. I left it. I left it all. How I didn't want this point? Well, the thing is, I'm, like, I've told you before, money never orientated me in any way, shape or form. So why should I take money from a contract which I'm never going to fulfil? That's why I walked but away from that. you not the opinion of, well, if I've got three years... If he has a bad six months, he's gone. I've still got two and a half years. I know, I know, but I was one of these where I just thought, do you know what? I was I was relatively comfortable with money because of that. So I just thought I don't need the hassle. I'd found out a couple of years later, a couple of years later when I got divorced, I wasn't relatively comfortable. <laughs> Uh, so Lester, I is there any chance of getting that walking half chance? of that door back or yeah. <laughs> Any chance. Uh, but, <laughs> look, I think sometimes life just throws up these different things. Um, you got divorced, you have a bad time. You know, lads have been on here, I've been to rehab and stuff like that with different stuff. But you just try and think, well, what can I do to make it better? How can I make my life better? So you just start again. And to be quite honest, in a place, I mean, I'm in a place at the moment where I'm coming down, you know, for a fact, I, I'm with you and, and uh, Chris with the walk and brilliant lads. We do the golf days. We all work on different jobs and stuff like that. I've got a great house, lovely wife, and you just crack on and enjoy life. Still, I'm still phoning Lester up. Is that <laughs> yeah. How I mean, old were you at that point at Lester? Um, 31, 32. Right. Um, I left Leicester and then I joined Bolton under Sam. Uh, I was getting paid five grand a week. Um, I was basically just kind of be a, a, to be to be a player that was on the bench that would come on and just in case and always be there as a kind of a, um, a safeguard. And I can remember coming to the end of the season. I, I spoke to Phil Brown and um, and Neil Mack, obviously two massive Newcastle lads, and they were like. Sam always likes to do these evaluations at the end of seasons and, and stuff like that and where you're at and where you can progress and stuff like that. And they went, listen, you've got another contract. You've absolutely sorted. So I went in to see Sam and um, he'd gone, uh, listen, 32, he said, probably going to go for another young centre-half just to like kind of cover what we've got. And I've gone, listen, not a problem. I said, I've got irons to the fire. I'm going to play in America just in case. Anyway, he'd signed one of the lads from Real Madrid who was 30 bloody five, didn't he? <laughs> I was like, that, that kicked me in the teeth. <laughs> so, so I finished and um, I went to New England Revolution in, uh, in Boston and I played for eight months there. Loved it. Great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and then I came back and retired and I retired for about six to eight months. 
And then I got a phone call off uh, Martin Scott, who was assistant manager to a bloke called Neil Cooper, who was manager at Hartlepool. And he said, listen, we're going for promotion. Do you want to come in the dressing room and help the lads? And I was like, no, to be quite honest, I'm kind of coming on 34 now. Uh, no, nah, I'll just leave it. And he was like, listen, we'll pay you 500 quid a week. And I went, I'm not bothered about the money. I went, do you know what, where, where are you training? And he went, oh, we're Maiden Castle, but opposite. I went, all right, okay, no problem. So I signed till the end of the season, but I knew very, very quickly I'd made the wrong decision because in the training sessions, you've got young kids that's 18, 19, 20, 21, and they're flying about all over the place. And, and you, when the ball's there, you're thinking, I can get that, and then it's gone. And you're thinking, oh, shit, no, I can't. <laughs> that's Steve, how we all play for Newcastle and Man City, <laughs> and I'm just nicking in front of him. Yeah. So my decision was, after the end of that season, I went, I'm not playing anymore. Actually, Hardy Pool offered me another contract. Could, can you stop there for another year? And I went, no. I said, for that reason, I didn't want players thinking, hold on a second, yeah. He's played for England, Man City, Newcastle, and it, it, he's a piece of cake. So I, and I didn't like the, the days where they do the running. So I just thought, no, nah, that's it. So I stopped. Um, and to be quite honest, I didn't do anything for about six months. Um, I didn't do anything kind of productive, if I'm being brutally honest, but nothing that, that caused any issues. And then I thought, you know what, I'll get all my coaching badges because I, I just thought I would like to get back into football after that break. So I got all my coaching badges, every one, and then you can't bloody get in because the, mm. bloody ref, uh, the, the managers won't let you in because then it's a threat to their job. Yeah. Uh, so they therefore thought after about three, four years of trying to do that, I thought, right, media is the way to go. So luckily enough, I've been involved in that now. We'll just have a quick piss and then we'll get on to England because I think we've not touched on it, have we? Oh, yeah. So a quick piss. If we speak about the happier... Your happier days, Euro, Euro 96, mm -hmm. must have been some experience, experience. for you. It talks about being blessed, I mean, the managers and the players, but that, for me, in our generation, Euro 96 especially, mm. like looking looking on at that, what a time, especially with the country as well, being everybody behind you and everything, it must have been some experience. Yeah, I mean, if you look at kind of the, the list of just, just managers, um, you know, kind of when I started, it was Jim Smith, Ozzy Ardellas, Kevin Keegan, Kenny Daglish, Rue Tullard, Sir Bobby Robson. And with England, uh, it was uh, Terry Venables. I mean, only one time with, with Glenn Hoddle. Uh, but just the build-up before the Euro 96, uh, I, can, I can remember Kevin sort of saying, every time we're playing any games, listen, if you do well against this one, he says, I'm on the phone to Terry and I'll be telling him this and I'll be telling him that. And um, and as I said, the, the lads used to constantly sort of say, oh, easy dad, easy dad, all the time <laughs> with Kevin. And I can remember I was driving home uh, from from training and it was in, in 94 and um, I got a phone call and I had to pull over because there was no like kind of connect to the uh, car thing. Uh, and I pulled over and I just basically thought it was the lads taking the mick because uh, when I answered it, he went, uh, is that Stephen? I went, yeah. And he went, it's Terry. And I went, Terry, you? And he went, Terry Venables. And I went, fuck off. And I put, <laughs> and I put the phone down. <laughs> fuck you, Terry. And anyway, because I just thought the boys would be like, kind of, just pretend it's Terry Venables. Let's put him on speakerphone and just have a giggle. Yeah. Do you know what the boys are like? They're horrible. And uh, it happened again. And I did the same. Anyway, I, I get another phone call and it comes up, gaffer. So I've rang, uh, I've picked her up and I've gone, hello. And he went, uh, can you stop putting the, uh, putting the phone down to the England manager, please, and tell him to F off? <laughs> and I went, is it, is it really him? And he went, can you just take the call, please? <laughs> so anyway, about five minutes later, I just sat in the car and I was like, is this really true? So the phone rang and obviously it was Terry Venables and he went, Steve, how, how are you feeling? How's things? You've done really well. Um, would you like to meet up with, there's a group of us meeting up. We've got uh, Nigeria at such and such. And I was like, is this for real? And he was like, Did yes. Yeah, you, you apologise at any time. So look, Gaff, look, Terry, I'm really sorry, but I thought the lads... I did at the thing. end, uh, but not initially, because I was still in shock. Um, and I, I basically just sort of said, uh, yes, of course, absolutely. Uh, and then I sort of said, listen, I'm really sorry about... Uh, and he went like, he says, yeah, I've had that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I can remember going down, and we, we, we stopped at a hotel called Burnham Beaches, was in Slough. 
And I can remember I, I got there so early. It was ridiculous because I was just terrified. I thought, I oh, can't be late. I can't be this, can't be that. And I sat there and I'm thinking, oh, th there's, there's him coming in. There's that one coming in. There's that one coming in. And I'm thinking, wow, these are absolute superstars. And I'm thinking, I have to sort of think, I've got to introduce myself because they're not going to know who I am. Even though you played against them? Yeah, but you know when you have that in, like kind of, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm with the big boys here. I'm not messing about, even though I know for a fact I've done all right and, and you know, things have gone okay. I'm still thinking, you know, Tony Adams, um, Platt, Shearer, I, I played with them, but, you know, I'm just like kind of, I, I played against them, but I will play with them. Uh, all the other players that, that's in this squad, I'm thinking, oh my good God. So I'm going, hi, I am. And they'll be going, hi, Steve, how are you doing? And the, the lads were absolutely brilliant. Uh, so getting into that bit and then building up to the Euro 96, uh, I can remember we went to um, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's the infamous well, that's, that's uh, dentist chair. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Are you present? Of course. I won the competition. I beat <laughs> Teddy Sheridan in the final. <laughs> <laughs> and um, not the proudest moment, if I'm being real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think Terry pulled me to one side when I was in, uh, in Hong Kong and uh, basically sort of said, you're in the squad. Um, there was a few lads. It was, it was so awful actually coming back because there was a big group of us and, and some were in and some weren't. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't actually celebrate. Um, listen, some lads knew they were going to be in. Uh, I didn't. Uh, but, of course, uh, to get that vote of confidence from somebody like him that's done what he's done is, you, you know, you just think, wow, I, I must be doing something okay. Was there any high-profile lads that thought there might have been in that weren't, if you remember? I think you look at maybe Dennis Wise, maybe he's. Um, I'm just trying, I, I can't really think who wasn't in or who got negated from that squad. Did you know that you were in before the dentist chair? No. Right. No, so it that's... was at the end. <laughs> so did you think maybe that I've, I've kicked myself in the nuts? No, I, I, no, that was just like everybody was there, in all fairness. Right. Um, I know there was not, not everybody. Obviously, we had people like Gary Neville and, and one or two others that uh, were, in all fairness to them, Good pros, we weren't. Uh, not like detrimental to them, but just we went out for a, for a night out, you know what I mean? And it just went, it was a night out that just went completely pear-shaped, but it was fabulous at the same time. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was a fantastic night. I think that what, what makes it worse is the fact of the ripped T-shirts and stuff like that. That makes as though, it looks as though we are completely and utterly gone off the map. <laughs> but it wasn't that. It was basically Brian Robson was wearing a Versace shirt and we had all Umbro gear on because we weren't allowed to bring, like, we not that we weren't allowed, but we just didn't think we'd be out. So you didn't bring any dress wear. So we just wore an Umbro top. I mean, we looked like paraffin lamps in all fairness. <laughs> so, of course, Robbo was wearing this Versace top. And I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody just went, that top does not look right knee, and just went and ripped it. And Robbo was going, no, it's Versace, it's Versace. <laughs> And then somebody grabbed all of somebody else's top and then somebody else's top. And then before you know it, you see the iconic picture. I think there's me, Teddy Sheringham, I think Stevie Max in there. And I can't remember who else is in there. And, oh, Gaza, sorry, the main one. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it just looks as though it's an absolute carnage. I've got the hairiest chest in the world, apparently. Uh, but... We all actually got back to the hotel absolutely fine. We all got up the next morning absolutely fine. Uh, but, of course, the, the British press got onto it. And we knew going into the first game against Switzerland that we had to get a right, uh, a right result. But ultimately, we didn't. We drew 1-1. Don't get me wrong. That incident ended being like kind of a, a, a big thing for the squad which actually brought us all together because we got absolutely battered by the um, the mm, press. Strength in arms, like bring everyone. And then together. I can remember, I can remember we played. I can remember the Dublin game when um, there was the fans that had wrecked it, and we all had the kind. Of, the, the game got postponed halfway through because the Hooligans, uh, the fans, like kicking off and stuff like that. And I can remember Tony Adams getting everybody together and going close ranks. That, that they were the words he used: close ranks. And that's what happened with the Euro squad lads. Um, I mean, I, I felt good because I kind of wasn't part of it because I ended up getting injured after the first game. Uh, but the, the 
the togetherness of that group at that particular time was absolutely frightening. It just so happened where after the Switzerland game where the lads got did get battered, their commitment and um, resolveness in every single thing that it did was unbelievable. And it just went like the Scotland game, Holland game, Spain game, all that. It was just amazing. The Stu Pierce penalty, the Gaza goal, all this. And then it was a beautiful summer's, uh, summer uh, and all the flags and it's coming home, that song and all that kind of thing. It ended up being an amazing tournament. And a tournament we should have won, actually, because, you know, we battered Germany. Gaza right at the end, kind of just hesitated before he slides in and just misses at the far post. But that's just, again, one of them things like? that we do. What was he like, Gaza, around the, around the dressing room? Kept everybody... I, I spoke about Spirits Tino. Up. I spoke about Tino Spray and, like, Space Cadet, but now you've got an English version of a Space Cadet, to be quite <laughs> honest. Um, unbelievable. I've got so many stories. I mean, we all know we do the after-dinner scene and stuff. I've left so much out of this podcast, which is ridiculous but I'm not allowed to see it, but I will see on on different things. Uh, but you, you've got Gaza that's, um, I think we've got it, we've got it down here. He, he's an absolute nightmare. I mean, so brilliant. Everybody loves him, but he's a complete nut of pest. June 96, <laughs> obviously we stopped at Burnham Beaches at, um, in Slough. And I don't know how he did it, but he ended up getting into everybody's room and tipping it. And tipping it, what I mean by that is just flipping everything so everything's all over the place and ruining your room because everybody rooms on their own, uh, not like at club level where you room with somebody. Uh, so you'd hear one of the lads when they come back from training and they'd go, Gascoigne, you know, I think Gascoigne, <laughs> the room is absolutely ruined. And after we'd, um, after we'd been knocked out by Germany, um, there was a few of us, I mean, everybody was down at the bar just having a couple of beers and stuff like that. And uh, I, I was with, there was me, Jimmy Redknapp, um, Steve McManaman and Steve Stone. And we were talking about Gazza, about how he's done all the rooms and stuff like that. Anyway, me and Stoney, for some reason, thought, right, let's do him. Because he'd done everybody's. He'd annoyed everybody. So <laughs> me and Stoney thought, right, you know, we'll get his key. So we got his key, we went up to his room. Gaz has got o, uh, OCD, so we thought it's it's too simple and it's too, you know, easy, really, just to rip his room apart and all that kind of thing. And it's not fair, really, let's be honest, on the hotel staff. So he was all packed, he was all ready, and he had a Louis Vuitton bag. And back in the day, Louis Vuitton uh, was... Louis Vuitton. I mean, afterwards, we all got Larry Vuittons and stuff like that. <laughs> I certainly got one. Um, and it, we opened it up and it was all packed dead nicely. You know, everything was pristine. It was ironed right in the right place. The socks, the T-shirts, the jumpers, everything, toilet bag. So we thought, should we just mess that up? And, we, and we've gone, me and Stoney sat on the bed and just went, this is too easy. What? Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take everything out apart from the bottom layer. I weed in it and Stony shit in it. <laughs> there we go. And then we put everything then we put everything back. <laughs> so we basically shit and pissed in his bag and placed everything nicely, zipped it up and put it back to where it was. So Gaza, when he comes, when he wakes up the next morning, he opens his bag up. Opens it up, cushy, not a problem. Not a, maybe it's not a big smell or whatever, but he's just thinking, oh, I'm a bit rough or whatever, and zips it back up. But he, after the Euros, he um, he got married to his missus Cheryl, and they'd gone away on holiday. But if you remember that summer, it was absolutely bloody red hot. So of course that bag has been in his house with shit and piss for two and a half, three weeks. So you, you can noticed. imagine the smell when he got back. <laughs> but I didn't get found out. I think this might be the first time I've never actually mentioned my name. I know Stoney got mentioned, but I've never been mentioned. <laughs> so this is the very first time An I've exclusive, actually mentioned. Another exclusive. <laughs> Three-week-old boulder in my was watched back. <laughs> what was the crap with the physio? That's an with awful him? story, that, by the way. Um, oh, the physio. What I mean, if... You know yourself, obviously, if you've got family at Sunderland or Newcastle or you've got Barnsley or Rotherham or whatever it is, normally what you say to your kit man or um, whoever it is, 
just say if I was at Man City and I'm playing Sullen on your castle, I would ask the physio or the kit man, can you drive my car up? Because we're not allowed to drive it up for insurance reasons and stuff like that. So they would drive the car up. So after the game, you could jump in your own car that's at the ground and then drive to your mum and dad's or whatever and then have a the Saturday night at your family's house and then maybe come down the Sunday if special, uh, special permission, possibly, uh, to, to come down on the Monday. And um, what Gazi used to do is he used to tell the physio, oh, can you drive me car uh, to such and such? And then he'd be on the bus let the physio drive away, and when the physio drove away, he'd ring up the police and tell the police that his car's been stolen. <laughs> <coughs> so the coppers, the coppers would hunt his car down. He'd give the, he'd give the, um, he'd give the registration. So the car would basically take the route of what the bus the was. And about half an hour along the road on the A19 or wherever it is, <laughs> you could see a car pulled into the nearby with some blue lights flashing with a police car behind. And it would be the physio being pulled out of the car <laughs> with his hands on the bonnet. <laughs> and the bus would drive past slowly and all the boys banging on the window. <laughs> and guys are giving the V signs, or the, like the, excuse my words, but the banker sign and going, no bed. But that's what he used to do because he was absolutely <laughs> that's brilliant. brilliant, man. It's genius. That's incredible crack, isn't it? <laughs> a little break in play, gents, for uh, a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, NordVPN. I don't know it's if VPN. you're aware of it. Are you aware of NordVPN? No. Well, for, all, for everybody out there as well, NordVPN is the number one for bouncing your geolocation. So you, maybe a game's only on in China, for instance. And you want to watch it, Barnes of E. Nottingham Forest, all of a sudden, use NordVPN on the subscription, and you're in China watching that game, John. So let me just get this right. So I'm sat in Barnsley. Yeah. There's a game on in China. It's been shown in China. But an English game, yeah. shown in China. Yeah. Use my, NordVPN. And that makes my computer seem like it's in China. And you're watching that game, sat there with a sweet and sour, watching Barnes of E. Nottingham Forest. Well, I didn't even know, that, that? I didn't even know what a VPN were. What's the quality VPN? like? Oh, the, it's the number one quality for all VPN services as well. Buffering? No buffering. No, we don't do no buffering. Sold. Just trying to think what game to watch this weekend. So any, any that, game there's, then? There's, there's like your, your Netflix services as well. That Some shows are only available in, in America. You can use your VPN and watch those shows that are only shown in America. And not only that, with not VPN, they provide a security service as well. So all your passwords, all your bank details, and everything with the subscription, completely secure. So on six devices as well, that. Six devices. So I can watch any game from <laughs> Your mind's the blown, world. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I might even fuck this guy off. <laughs> and they're offering a new anti-bell word protection with all the subscription. With a cost special offer, all you've got to do is click on the link that's in the description and you'll get the special offer with anti-malware and threat protection with part of, as part of your subscription. So all you've got to do is click on that link. Before you know it, you'll be watching that game. So just to clarify, I can watch any game. Any game. Well, not any any game that's being broadcast, yeah. Right, perfect. Yeah. How good's that? So, what yeah, massive thanks to NordVPN. Yeah, thank you. And what, what, just what, what game am I going to watch this weekend? That's me, that's my only problem in life now. <laughs> Incredible. Do you know in that Euro 96, <laughs> did you, were you allowed to drink at all in the hotel or stuff or like that? You know, like you, you played during uh, the tournament. Yeah, you played Spain. Teddy Venables have gone, right, lads, get your things down to the bar, little warm down tomorrow, crack on. No, not really. I think um, I think we all always came back. I think maybe, you know, the lads might have a beer, but I think that will be it. I think the vast majority... If any, really did. I mean, look, you could have a glass of red wine or something with your meal, but I think the rest, of, like every, all the boys, really r realised how serious and how big this competition was. So a lot of the lads just kind of, you know, that might have even poured themselves a glass of red wine, but didn't even touch it. Yeah. I bet you were um, just exhausted as well, though. You know yeah, what about? It's not, not the just walk? the exhaustion of the game, though, Chris. It's 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 the. It was the whole country. Yeah. Mm, the hysteria. You know, the lads it, just yeah. like known. It's the whole country's looking mm. at you. So for the sake of even, I mean, look, listen, is a glass of red wine going to do you any harm? No. But the lads was the lads were absolutely just like, no, 
we just get up the next morning, we train, we look forward to the next game. It was so dedicated, it was absolutely scary. It was the best focus I've ever seen from a group of players in all my career. Mm. You know, like, obviously there weren't so much social media in that in 96. Were the papers rounding about the hotel? So could you go down the reception and there'd be, or we're like, right, we don't want any press or nobody knowing what the papers are writing or all like that, or were, you, were there just papers where you could just read about what, what's, what's going off around the country? No, what, what we did was we'd, uh, the lads had, had put together where if you did an interview, you had to mention songs or song titles. So you had to bring them in, the, the answers that you had to give. <laughs> uh, so it was actually the lads had to think just in case they were asked different questions. Yeah. Actually, I think one of the best ones was Gareth Southgate. I thought he was absolutely brilliant on different things that he did. But Because we could see where we were in the hotel, there's like this massive lawn and there was a, like a, a box that was just put up because obviously the box could show where we were the opposite way. Uh, and we could see them live and the light was on. So we could see them watching on the TV. And I know there's like a 30, 30 second feedback or a 10 second feedback or something like that. But we would basically sort of, the lads would give interviews and mention songs. So you've got idiots in the squad as well. So one or two of the lads, they're just sort of saying, while they're on live, somebody go out and do naked cartwheels. <laughs> so you'd see cartwheels... <laughs> You, know, you see some sort of movement behind Gary Lineker, or whoever it was, <laughs> doing an interview with whoever it was, and you'd see this movement, and you wonder what it was. But it was one of the lads doing <laughs> cartwheels. <laughs> and we just pissed off so couldn't at the really, TV. Couldn't, you couldn't really make it out. Oh, you can't make it out. It's pitch black, <laughs> but you could see somebody flipping. <laughs> in between the lights and it was one of the lads <laughs> or running past or something just like holding the hands up ah, funny, man. what will get a Southgate song that he dropped in do you know what I can't remember what he did but I think it was that was like kind of um, culture club or something like that I can't remember what he actually did but uh, he was one of the he was one of the best ones be a bad one, didn't <laughs> yeah. did you play well well yeah to be fair but we, we could have come a chameleon and, and play better there were some great ones and a few of the lads did it like and a few of the lads were like really really good obviously thought about it quite uh, quite in depth did you ever um, get involved with the faith healers oh my good god this is a great story um, <clears throat> I'll go with after the year 96 um Glenn Huddle took over, and the very first squad I was involved in, and he, he pulled me after the first training session and sort of said, um, listen, Stephen, I've got this woman that I would like you to see. I think she'd be absolutely brilliant. And I said, well, who's that? And he'd mentioned a, a lady called Eileen Drury. And I, I knew what she was about. So I just sort of said, listen, Gaffer, I'm going to have to stop you there. I said, um, I've been to see somebody similar and there was a woman called Betty Shine, um, and it's not for me. And he went, uh, oh, listen, that's fine. He says, thanks for being up front. At least you've, you know, you've gone there. You've gone with an open mind, not a problem. Never picked me again, did he? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason behind that... I leave one on fucking £500 a man, that's why. <laughs> the reason behind that was Kevin Keegan's wife, Jean, she, uh, she'd read these books of a woman called Betty Shine, and... Betty Shine's faith healer. Now I'm dead open. I'm, I'll I'll try anything. Um, and so, Gene had said to Kevin, Kevin Keegan, um, I think you should get a few of the players to go and see this Betty Shine. I'd spoke to my mum about it. My mum had gone, oh, go and see her. She's read some brilliant books and all this kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right, okay. I mean, you know, my mum's one of these that she'll she'll make these bands with it like colours that's supposed to be positive colours and stuff like that fine, I'll wear them and then I'll just chuck them off because I just think it's not for me. But it doesn't mean to say that's for somebody else. If that's their bag, then, yeah, I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to criticise it. So anyway, um, Derek Wright pulls um, me and Alan Shearer and sort of says, listen, the gaffer's been on. He wants you to go and see this woman called Betty Shine, Faith Ayla. I mean, I was like, looked at each other gone, okay, right, okay. So anyway, we travel all the way down to... God knows where in the country, right down south. And um, we go and see this woman. First of all, none of us were on board with this. You know, it, we, we like the proper science, uh, the proper stuff that you're supposed to do. The other big mistake that she made was when she was wanting to do her, her stuff, 
she had the three of us in the room. What she should have done is isolate us. Yeah. So we could have took her seriously, but we didn't because she had the three of us in. So I was up first. So I'm lying on the bed and she's put a hand on my leg and she's gone, right, you should, you should feel some heat. So can you feel the heat? Can you feel the heat? <laughs> and she's whispering, can you feel the heat? And I'm thinking, I can feel the heat because your bloody hands are warm. <laughs> Nothing else, in all fairness. And I'm going, I could, uh, yeah, it's a little bit warm. So me going, it's a little bit warm. She was set off. And then Derek Wright set off. The shoulders going and stuff like that. <laughs> and I've gone, oh, that, oh that's getting warm, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cracking him up. So I'm playing to Al and Derek and I'm going, oh, it's hot. It's hot. She's going, feel hot. Feel hot. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Basically, I got feeling knout, absolutely knout. <laughs> so anyway, she more or less thinks that she's done her thing. She went, you could be healed. You could be healed. And she's whispering, you could, you could be healed, but you can be healed. And she's whispering it. I think it's time. I think it's time to move on. So I'm going, all right, okay, fine. <laughs> I get off the bed. Shira gets on, does the same. He's messing about as well. Absolute, do you know what? As I said, I'm, I'm one of these where if you believe in all this kind of thing, then fine, no problem. I thought it was absolute nonsense. She we did, so did Derek. Uh, we believe in proper science and stuff like that. So we've done all this kind of uh, we've done all this kind of thing, and um, <laughs> we've uh, we've just thought nothing of it. So when Glenn Hoddle basically sort of said about um, Island Jury, I've, I've told him that. Unbeknownst to me, when I never get picked again, I was with Ray Parler. And when Ray Parler, uh, I was doing some stuff for, for Sky, and uh, Ray Parler went, hey, Boy, what happened to you in um, Glen Oral and all this kind of thing? And I've gone, uh, Oh, that was Eileen Jury. And he went, No, you're joking. He says, Were you the same? Did you get fobbed off the squad because of Eileen Jury? I went, Oh, yeah, because I just thought it was nonsense and all that kind of thing. And he went, Oh, did you not hear about me in Gaza before the World Cup of uh, France? I went, No. <clears throat> it's scary to think this woman had so much kind of pull, uh, pull yeah, on uh, on the squad and stuff like that. So basically, she'd organised a room in the hotel where there was a chair in the middle of a room and she would sit them down, she'd go behind them and she would whoosh, basically whoosh, whoosh with her hands and stuff like that. <laughs> so Ray Parler comes in and he says, ah, he says, I think it's absolute nonsense. He says, because I've gone in and he says, I've sat down. He went, uh, Eileen, just a little trim off the back, please. <laughs> and she's gone, what? And he went, just a little bit off the back, please. And she went, get out. <laughs> went, what do you mean? She went, get out. <laughs> and he went, unbelievably, that was me out of the World Cup squad. <laughs> he says, but the best one, he said, Gaz has gone in. He said, he sat down and she's basically, uh, is that camera going to see me on this one? Uh, let's see. Paul Gascoigne. But it's speaking to that though, Steve. Right. And she's basically going, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> then she's picking it up, going to the window and going, go, go, go. <laughs> same again, same again, same again. Go, go, go. So Gaz is laughing. And she's going, Paul, what are you laughing for? And, uh, oh, sorry, she said, Paul, uh, she said, what are you doing? And, he, and she went, uh, Paul, I'm getting rid of all the evil spirits. Uh, she said, it's just so it's going to be just me and you, just me and you. But he's still giggling. He's still giggling. Goes behind him. Go, go, whoosh, whoosh, all this kind of stuff. He said, I went on for about 20 minutes. He says, Gaz, uh, Gaz is still, like, sitting there. And he says, all of a sudden, his shoulders start going. She went, oh, my good. Good God, Paul, what's going on? What's going on? He went, I'm sorry, I ain't the evil spirits outside pulling funny faces. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone, get out. <laughs> <laughs> so she just popped him out. So he's gone. And if you remember, remember the story, <laughs> he, trashed his, he trashed his room and yeah. everything, didn't he? But Eileen Drury basically picked the squad. <laughs> 
So Gaz is just trying to have a laugh and she's gone out, <laughs> he's out. And that was that was it. That was the Glenn Hoddle thing. It was absolutely bloody ridiculous. Absolute mental. <laughs> but the daft thing about that as well uh, was when me, Shira and uh, Derek Wright had uh, gone down there, um, we we... We we come back to the hotel and we just thought, listen, we'll have something to eat and we'll we'll go out and we'll just have a couple of beers. Alan Shearer cannot go out have a couple of beers. Let's be honest, it's Alan Shearer. You know, he's uh, he's well, he's amazing and he's so well recognised. So we go out and we just have a couple of beers. We went to this pub called the Star, and of course, word got round. It's Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer, not Steve Howie. Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer. So anyway, we're having a, a couple of beers and stuff like that. And then we've just gone, listen, we're going back to the hotel. We're just having a couple of back, uh, couple of drinks back to the hotel. So a few people came back. So we're having a couple of drinks back to the hotel. There's a few people that's come from the pub to this place where we were, which had been recommended by uh, Betty Shine, uh, who we did that thing Shite with. with. And um, so anyway, after about another three or four hours, me, Al and, and Derek, we've gone to bed. So we've got to bed, we've got in our car the next morning, we've drove all the way back. And then the following day, we've got into training and uh, we're getting the vibe that the manager is not happy, not happy at all. So we're thinking, well, why not? Apparently, our hotel that we were at, there was no locks on the door, so people have just gone into different rooms and just stopped on the night and basically trash rooms and stuff like that. We didn't know, we've gone to bed. So anyway, after training, um, which which Kevin has took me and Al's obviously doing rehab and stuff like that, and um, Kevin goes, listen, I want to see, yeah, I want to see all of you. In all fairness, but Al, I'll start with you. So I'm in my training kit. Al's in his training kit. Derek's in his training kit, and uh, Al goes in first. So I think he's going to be in there for a while. So I get changed. Bear in mind how Christmas do. So I've gone up, and we're going from Chester Street to Newcastle. Al's going in his training kit because he, he knows he's going to go home and get changed and then come back. So I get changed. Now, I'm in fancy dress. So I'm in an <laughs> emu costume. <laughs> so do you know one of those emu costumes where you put your legs in? So your legs are like the bird's legs. And then you've got that bonnet around you type thing. And then you, the legs stick over. <laughs> and then I've got this long neck emu. <laughs> You're laughing. I've got this long neck emu. But there's this metal bit so you can move the neck and stuff like that. So I've got changed into that. I know what Derek Wright's getting changed to, so I'm just, I've getting changed and I'm sitting down. The door opens and I stand up. <laughs> the, the gaffer and Al are laughing and carrying on. Like, oh, yeah, yeah have a great day, you know. And I'm thinking, that's oh, not too bad. So he's come out and he's looked at me and he went, what, again, excuse my language, what the fucking hell have you got on? I've got this emu thing on, right? <laughs> I look like a right twat, to be fair. And he went, get in, get in. So I've got in and I've sat down. So you've got, got, you had to go in for a meeting as... As the emu. <laughs> as the emu. <laughs> and I've got the metal bit in my hand. <laughs> with a head. Let lay on his desk. Do the head. And I'm thinking, I don't want to put it in between my legs, so I'll just hold it. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I'm holding the head, and I've just moved the head to the one side so I can see him, right? And he's battering me, absolutely battering me. You've got no idea. Betty Shine's been on the phone to my missus. My missus has been on the phone to me. You've left the hotel rooms in a right state, and I've gone, oh, look, we haven't done any, anything. And he was keen to me. I didn't know, but apparently what I've done is I've... I've turned the head of the emu and put its head down as though it's like... <laughs> <laughs> getting a bollock in. <laughs> yeah, getting out of it. And he went, put that fucking emu's head down. <laughs> he went, where's Derek Wright? Where's Derek Wright? And he opened the door and he went, Derek, Derek, are you coming in here or what? Ray Thompson, who was the kit man, who's been there years and still there, and he went, he's getting ready, gaffer, every two minutes. And I've gone, oh, shit. <laughs> Because I know what Derek's getting dressed into. Bear in mind, Derek Wright is like an unbelievable physio, one of the best in the country, by not. Honestly, he's unbelievable. And I've gone, oh shit, he's gonna flip here. He's gonna flip. I've got an emu costume on, and Derek Wright's gonna turn up in this. Anyway, Kevin shuts the door, and I'm sat there, and I've got the emu thing. Derek opens, <laughs> opens the door. He's got a pink leotard top on. A tutu dress, <laughs> pink tights, 
and Dr. Martins. <laughs> Derek's a big bloke. <laughs> and he opens the door and Kevin goes, I am fucking speechless. <laughs> I am speechless, Derek. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. So I sat there. Derek's in his pink tutu outfit. I've got an emu outfit on. And I'm kind of nodding away to get abused. <laughs> And he's going, you're a disgrace, you're this, you're that, you're the other. And I'm thinking, please, can we not see the funny side of this? <laughs> and Kevin's looked and he's just looked and he went, I am embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. He went, I've got a current England international wearing a fucking emu costume. <laughs> and I've got one of the best visuals in the country wearing a fucking tutu. <laughs> 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 fucking get out. <laughs> Oh, and me and Derek were trying to get out the door at the same time when we hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> my neck got out. <laughs> my neck got out. <laughs> Derek's toffee's too to work out. <laughs> oh, it was, honestly, if you could have pictured it, it was just unbelievable. But it, that just got... I mean, it was so funny if it wasn't... I mean, it was awful because we just got absolutely battered off the manager. But we just... Me and Derek looked at each other and went... How she were getting away with that? They're all laughing and carrying on. And we've been battered. The blue-eyed boy gets away with a bloody murder again. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Man. Finish on that, eh? Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for oh, coming on, man. Thanks for your time, man, Stevie. Incredible. 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 <laughs>